Section 3.4 is modeling with quadratics. So this first slide is a review of what we talked about in section 3.3, um, and we're going to be using this to apply it to um, modeling problems. So you have your equations, your two types of equations for the parabola, both in standard form as well as in vertex form, um, how to calculate the vertex if you have it in standard form here. Axis symmetry is always x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. If you have a negative a value, that means it's opening down, so your maximum value is uh, whatever your y coordinate of your vertex is. And if A is positive, that means it's opening up, so you have a minimum at whatever the y coordinate of your vertex is. And so this is what we're going to be utilizing to maximize and minimize problems. So our first problem here is we have a farmer that has 2,000 yards of fencing to enclose a rectangular field. And we want to know what dimensions of that rectangle enclose the most area. So basically, he wants to utilize the most space. So when you see most area here, we should be thinking that we want to maximize this or find the maximum. And then the 2,000 yards of fencing is going to go around the outside of the rectangle. So that's going to be our perimeter. So our perimeter of our fence is 2,000 yards. And we know that perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length plus twice the width. So I'm going to have that be length and then this be width. And then area, we know that area of a rectangle, in terms of both the length and the width, is the length times the width. So in order to maximize this, we need to have area in terms of just one variable. So either just in terms of the length or just in terms of the width. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to utilize this perimeter equation that we created. And we are going to solve this just for one variable. So go ahead and pause the video and solve your perimeter equation for just the length or just the width and then plug that in to your area formula or your area equation. So we have area as a function of just one of the variables. So here I um, solved our perimeter equation for the length, and I plug that into our area formula here, our area equation. So now we have a function of the area in terms of just the width. The area in terms of the width is the width times the length, which the length was 1,000 minus whatever the width is. And if you FOIL that out, you end up with the uh, area in terms of the width is negative w squared plus 1,000 w. So now we have a quadratic here, and so we can find the maximum. Since I know this is a maximum because our a value is negative, so this is going to be a downward facing parabola. So we want to utilize this function and help us find the dimensions of length and width that will maximize the area. So go ahead and pause the video and find the dimensions that will maximize this parabola. So because this is a parabola, we know how to maximize parabolas. We know, again, it's a max because it's a downward facing parabola. So the max is going to occur at our vertex. Since it's not asking for the maximum area, just the length and the width of the, that maximized area, we want to find the x coordinate, or the w in this case, um, which is our h value of our vertex, our x coordinate of our vertex. Since this is in standard form, I'm going to do negative b over 2a, where b is 1,000 and a is negative 1. So you end up with our x coordinate of our vertex, which is w, our width, is 500 yards. So then to find the length, I'm going to plug it back into the equation we had here for length, which was length was 1,000 minus the width. And so therefore, the length is also going to be 500 yards. So the dimensions that maximize the area of this rectangular field is 500 by 500 yards. Whenever you have a rectangular um, field or whatever that you want to maximize, if you're putting fencing around all four sides, the maximum area is always going to occur at um, the square. If you have a set perimeter, maximum area for a rectangle will always be at the square if you're using all four sides. For this next problem, we have a projectile that's being fired from a cliff that's 500 feet in the air over water. And it's being fired at an inclination of 45 degrees with an initial velocity of 400 feet per second. And the height of the projectile is given by this function h of x, where x is the distance from the cliff and h is the height off the water. So here's our function, h of x is equal to negative 32 x squared over 400 squared plus x plus 500. So they're actually giving us the function in standard form on this one. And the first part is we want to find the maximum height. So we know it's going to have a maximum height because our a value is negative, which means it's a downward facing parabola. So we're going to have a maximum height here. Um, so again, it's in standard form. So go ahead and pause the video and find the maximum height of this projectile. 
So first, I wanted to find the x-coordinate of our vertex, which is our h-value, so negative b over 2a, where b is 1 and a is negative 32 over 400 squared. So I plugged in a and b, and I got, um, I simplified it, and I ended up with 400 squared over 64. So this is the distance in feet horizontally um, where the maximum occurs. And then we need to actually find the maximum height. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and find the actual maximum height. So I just took 400 squared over 64 and I plugged that in for x every time I saw an x in the original function to find the y coordinate. So negative 32 over 400 squared times 400 squared over 64 quantity squared plus 400 squared over 64 plus 500. Plug all of this into your calculator and you should end up with 1,750 feet. So the highest that it gets is 1,750 feet off the water. Part B wants to know how far away from the base um, before the, it hits the ground, or excuse me, before it hits the water. Um, you're probably gonna need a graphing calculator for this, so try this one, find the distance away from the cliff when the projectile hits the water. So on this one, you're just looking, since you want it where the uh, projectile is hitting the water, that means you want the height off the water to be zero. Well, height is h of x, so I set the original function equal to zero. And then I just plugged this in my calculator and found um, our zero, found where it intersected the x-axis. And you end up with an x-coordinate of 5,458.039 feet. So a little, a little under 5,500 feet away from the cliff, it's going to hit the water. So the last modeling problem here is our Golden Gate Bridge. So for the Golden Gate Bridge, um, we have a 746 foot tall towers, two of them, which are 4,200 feet apart. And then the roadway is 220 feet above the water. And the cables start at the top of the towers and they touch the roadway in the middle and they're parabolic in shape, okay? Um, so we have, I took it and I put it all on a picture here. And we want to find the height of the cable off the roadway when it's 1,000 feet away from the center. So we have a picture here. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a parabola and the equation of a parabola to help us model this situation to be able to solve the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw down an axis right here to make it more useful. And it's always helpful to me to put the origin right at the vertex. So I'm going to throw down this axis right here and put the vertex right at the origin. So what that does is now h and k, because our vertex is 0, 0, h and k are 0, 0. So now I'm going to simplify our function here and we're going to model this with y equals ax squared. The next thing that we're going to use is these points that they give us here um, where the cable is touching the tower. Because they tell us how tall the tower is and they tell us how far apart these towers are. So now that we've thrown down an x and y axis here, again, remember this is the origin right here, we can actually label this as a coordinate point. So given all of these heights and distances, label these two as coordinate points. Go ahead and pause the video and try that. So what I did is, I, since this is now the origin, um, the distance 4200 is going to be split in half, so the x-coordinate is going to be 2100. And then because the x-axis is sitting on the roadway here, the, whole, the height off the roadway is going to be the total height of the tower minus the distance from the roadway to the water. So this y-coordinate is going to be 526. So the way equations work is this point has to make this equation true. So if we plug in this point, we can actually find our a value. So go ahead and pause the video and use this coordinate point to help you find your, our a value for our equation. So I plugged in y to be 526, and I plugged in x to be 2100. And then I divided both sides by 2100 squared. And so then a is 526 divided by 2100 squared. And I'm just going to leave it that way. The more exact you leave it, the better. So don't plug it in your calculator. So our model equation is going to be y is equal to 526 divided by 2100 squared times x squared. So now this x is any distance away from the center of the road we can figure out what the y, the height, of the cable is. So the question asks, if we want to find the height of the cable 1,000 feet away from the center of the road, well, now we can utilize that. So now that we have this modeling equation, go ahead and pause the video and find the height of the cable 1,000 feet away from the center. So because this is 1,000 feet away from the center and our center is our origin for our coordinate plane, that means that x is going to be 1,000. 
So I plugged in x to be 1,000 into our model equation here, and we end up with y, which is the height off the roadway, to be 119.274 feet. So we modeled this situation, even though it was a real world situation, we were able to model it with a parabolic function. So this has been mathematical modeling, specifically with quadratic modeling.